Hello and welcome to O-Worm. Today we'll be taking a look at the anatomy of a skate. Skates are part of a group of animals called elasmobranchs, meaning they are cartilaginous fish whose skeleton is made of cartilage instead of bone. Other members of this subclass include sharks and rays. Cartilage is a strong and durable material that is lighter and more flexible than bone enabling elasmobranchs, which lack a swim bladder, to stay afloat in water. However, parts of the skeleton, such as the skull and vertebrae, are often strengthened by the deposition of calcium and salts, a process called calcification. So let's take a look at the external anatomy. So here are the eyes of the skate, right here, and also here. It's not these, it's this thing. Most skates live on the seafloor, where their flat shape makes it easy for them to hide by burrowing into the sand. Because of this, their eyes are on the top of their bodies here, facing up. This lets them see potential predators above them. Now right below the eyes are the spiracles, right here, and also here. Sharks normally pass water over their gills by taking water in through their mouth while swimming. However, skates are unable to do this because their mouths are on the bottom. When I flip it over, you can see it. Here, facing the sand. So to breathe, they use the spiracles from before, the spiracles here, to pump water to the gills without swallowing sand through their mouths. Now if I flip the skate over again, on the ventral side, you can see the gill slits. So they're right here, so here's one, here's another one, here's another, and here's another. They're also on the other side, right here. So water is taken in through the spiracles, passes over the gills, and then leaves the body through these five pairs of gill slits. Now here's the mouth, and you can't really see the teeth that well here. But skates have flat, pavement-like teeth for crushing hard-shelled invertebrates like mollusks and crustaceans. And right above these, here are the nostrils of the skate. So this one and this one, which is used for olfaction. And here, the tip of the skate is called the rostrum, and it's also called the snout. And now when I turn it over again, you can see that skate skin, just like shark skin, kind of feels like sandpaper because they're covered with a bunch of little tooth-like structures that act like armor. These tiny tooth-like structures are called denticles. Now here are the two large pectoral fins, right here, and closer to the tail are the two smaller pelvic fins. And now here is the tail, and you can see that there's a dorsal fin on the tail as well. You can also see a sharp spike on the tail, and this is used for protection against predators. And now on the ventral side, you can see the cloaca right here, which is the common exit for both the digestive and urogenital tract. And on a male, around the cloaca, you would see two elongated structures like this, which are called claspers. Only male skates have them, and they are used to transfer sperm to the female during mating. So you can see this skate doesn't have them, which means this is a female. So now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. So first make a horizontal incision just below the mouth like this. Then make a vertical incision until the end of the gill slits here. Then peel back the skin with the help of the scalpel. Now just cut along the gill slits. This opens up a semicircular window into the thoracic cavity. So now I'll expose the harp by cutting away some of the muscle that's in front of it. Now 
Now you can see the gills here and the heart in the center. Now as you saw before, here is a gill slit and you can see that each gill slit leads into one row of gills. And you can see that each gill has these gill filaments. You can see it better up here. And these filaments increase surface area for gas exchange. Now at the bottom of each row of gills are the gill rakers, which you can see if I pry them open. And these gill rakers right here, which kind of looks like a comb, functions in filtering out debris from entering the gills. So these gills are what the skates use to breathe, taking in oxygen and expelling carbon dioxide. And down in the center here is the heart. Skates, like most fish, have a two-chambered heart. So it has one atrium and one ventricle. So you can see this center structure here is the ventricle. And it looks like there's two atria here, these dark structures on either side. But it's actually one atrium. And these are the two lobes of one atrium that actually connects in the back. So the problem with this is that once the ventricle pumps blood to the gills, the blood slows down significantly in the gills, and it still needs to make the trip through the body and back to the heart. Later vertebrates, like us, circumvented this by having a four-chambered heart, where the blood from the lungs returns to the heart for an extra pump before going into the body tissues. Here in the skate heart though, you can see some other structures that are the precursors to the other two chambers of the heart that we have. So for example, when I lift the ventricle up, you can see this triangular pouch-like structure underneath, right here. And this is the sinus venosus, which the blood enters before going into the atrium. And after the blood enters the atrium, it goes into the ventricle, and then enters the conus arteriosus, right here, the cylindrical structure. And after the conus arteriosus, the blood then gets pumped into the body tissues. Thanks for watching part 1 of the skate dissection. Make sure to check out part 2 where we discuss the abdominal cavity and the cranial cavity. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more.